Bridges are an architectural symbol of a city's progress and wealth, and they also serve as important transit hubs that have evolved to meet modern needs. The number of man-made bridges continues to grow. China is home to a bridge that not only transports pedestrians to the realm of fantasy, but also takes home the equivalent of the Nobel Prize in bridge engineering. Even better, the price tag to become the world's longest high-speed train bridge is under $700 million. In addition, its design load is the highest of any high-speed railway bridge in the world. Afterwards, I'll show you this miraculous Chinese bridge and explain its significance. A big thank you for taking the time to see the video. Bridges have become more vital to everyday life as contemporary civilization has advanced. It may decrease the distance we need to go and allow us to safely cross busy highways or trains despite obstacles like rivers, mountain streams, and deep valleys. 20 kilometers upstream of the Nanjing Yank River Bridge is where you'll find the Nangai Bridge. This bridge over the Nangai Gan River between the Yeha and Puka neighborhoods of Nanjing. The overall cost of the Yank River Bridge project is around 700 million US dollars, as revealed by publicly available statistics. The bridge spans a distance of 9,273 meters, and its deck is laid up to accommodate a six-track train capable of traveling at a maximum speed of 300 kilometers per hour. The world's fastest trains cross this bridge. A total of six rail lines are included into the bridge's design load, and the pier supports can hold up to 17,000 tons. It has the highest design load of any high-speed rail bridge in the world. It took just three years to finish building the nanjing dash Angu yink River Bridge, which opened to traffic in 2007. The Nangai Waikh River Bridge was formally opened to traffic in January 2011, when both lanes of the Shanghai Haro Express passenger route over the bridge began operating. In the month of June of that year, the bridge's high-speed rail connection between Beijing and Shanghai has begun service. In December 2017, service began on Nang Metro Line S3 on both sides of the bridge. This not only takes use of the bridge's full complement of lines, but also distinguishes it as the first six-track railway bridge anywhere in the world. Its recognition also indicates the pinnacle of bridge building in China, yet the bridge's construction was not without its share of challenges. Construction of China's biggest main pier using a deep water foundation double wall steel hanging box coffer dam how to produce and to float along the river. Moreover, the steel coffer dam has to be precisely located in the deep water. Rapid current and tyrant. Identifying the needs, positioning, and precision of the primary steel girder put atop the bridge pier by the massive floating crane. There is no nation that doesn't have significant difficulty addressing these problems. The question is, how will China address these issues? Because China is so skilled at taking on the challenges faced by other nations, they have constructed some very remarkable infrastructure. Chinese engineers conducted extensive testing before settling on a new kind of steel with core 20 features such as excellent high strength, high toughness, and good welding performance. This steel was chosen because it was best suited to the bridge's needs. In addition, China has created new technology that allows completely rotating floating cranes, high torque drilling rigs, and an orthotropic steel bridge deck, all of which are used in the main bridge's steel girt crawler, type mobile cranes that can lift as much as 70 tons, and sling towers that can lift as much as three stories. In China, the issue of bridge construction has been resolved thanks to the development of modern materials, constructions, equipment, and processes. What, therefore, is his function in the construction of this very challenging bridge? The construction of the bridge is an important step in optimizing travel in China's eastern regions. Naji, Zhong, Nan, and Zhengbei might all benefit from its growth, for instance. In addition to relieving congestion on public transportation, the bridge also boosts investment opportunities in Nanjing and the surrounding region. Due to Naji China's prominence as a hub city on the Aizizi River's middle and lower reaches, the construction of this bridge has accelerated development in Nain. These qualities may be put to good use. Concurrently, the bridge reflects China's urbanization goal and is vital in advancing the economic and social well-being of the Nanjing metropolitan region and the integration of the Yink River Delta. The Nanjing Angu Yang River Bridge was built without any financial assistance from the Chinese government. Money for this bridge came during a period of substantial growth in Nanjing's urban building. 
the poll suggests. As a result, the bridge has begun using a novel approach of raising funds via the market in order to facilitate a greater number of shares being issued. With the help of the Netherlands, Yao was able to achieve a share capital increase in 2004. In keeping with the spirit of the contemporary business operation, a joint stock company was formed. The firm uses a number of market-based strategies to pool resources for bridge building. By 2007, a joint stock company was in charge of maintaining and operating the finished bridge. The joint stock corporation will transfer control to the Nang Municipal Authority after the end of the charge term. As the bridge's share capital was increased to accommodate an extension, the government's initial investment was refunded to the joint stock company. The Nang Angyuyu River Bridge clearly exemplifies the government's commitment to cost-free infrastructure. When the Nanging Yang River Bridge was erected, China did not have the technology to construct a steel tower bridge, and Japan was home to 80 of the world's steel tower bridges. Steel tower bridges are preferred because of the relatively quick time required for their construction, which is a major benefit. The bridge is not heavy. Structurally, it is quite secure and has excellent seismic performance. China's lack of expertise with steel tower bridge building was compensated for, and the quality of China's bridge construction equipment was raised with the completion of the Gai Gu Yangtze River Bridge. In July 2015 and July 2016, the Nain River Bridge handled roughly 600,000 trains and 450 million passengers. As a comparison, in a single year, the United States' whole population could be transported back and forth by China. While its impressive transit capacity is admirable, the bridge is not the busiest in the area. The George Washington Bridge in New York is a suspension bridge that spans the East River between Manhattan and Fort Lee, New Jersey. Besides being a crossing over the Hudson River, the George Washington Bridge also serves as access to 14 other highways. Because of this, the bridge has developed into a major thoroughfare in the Big Apple. As approximately 11 million vehicles crossed the George Washington Bridge in 2004, it has the potential to overtake the Golden Gate Bridge as the world's busiest bridge. The George Washington Bridge now sees an average of 300,000 vehicles every day, up from a mere 50,000 when it first opened. To give you an idea, there are now 250 million automobiles on U.S. Roads over half of all automobiles in the United States pass over the George Washington Bridge every year. Really disturbing information. Both of the aforementioned bridges are among the most ambitious and challenging bridge constructions ever undertaken. Each has its own unique qualities, but together they help drive economic growth in the area around the bridge and encourage sustainable regional development. The last question I have for my companions is this. What do you think of these two bridges? feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. If you like this video and want to see more like it in the future, subscribe to the China Prowess channel.